Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back with another brand, new video. Today is a video we are here to shake the disappointment of the weekend, leave that bad boy in the rear view and turn our attention to the next game which just happens to be Porto Away. But before we go any further on with today's video, we are closing in fast on 35,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here or even if you're a regular viewer who hasn't hit that subscribe button yet, please consider doing so and help us on our way towards 55 freaking K. But back to the video in hand then, shall we? And again, we've already said that it is Porto. Now, I don't know how you feel when you hear the name of Porto, but for me, it brings back so many memories of truly world-class teams. I think of the Jose Mourinho uh, Porto squad that surprised everyone. Had the likes of like Ricardo Carvalho and the centre-back, your Deco just doing things. They went all the way. And then a couple of years after that, you think of Hulk, James Rodriguez and Falcao when he was doing Falcao things all at the same time, smashing teams left, right and centre. That's what I instantly think of when I hear the name Porto, truly world-class teams. But taking a step back away from the name Porto and the nostalgia that that brings, just looking at this team that we are going to be playing tomorrow, are they still a very good team? The short answer annoyingly is yes. I'd love to say no and you probably thought the way I'm building up, CJ's going to say no here and we're going to walk all over them but in truth they are still a very good team are they a world-class team that they were in the past and what maybe nostalgia makes you think no but make no mistake about it ladies and gentlemen this is a very very dangerous team that we are playing tomorrow especially at home now what this team lacks in terms of a genuine out and out superstar what they've had kind of over the past they make up with, with a nice little mixture of youth and experience and one player who's an absolute animal that keeps everyone in check. But before we go any further on with identifying a couple of key players from Porto, let's look at them as an overall team then, shall we? Now, they do sit third in the league, and you might have seen that clickbait around over the last couple of days to try and minimalise this football team, but when you look beyond the clickbait, yes, they are technically sitting in third, but they're joint second and only one point or first. And, as you probably already know, Porto do technically sit last place in our group stage, but if you look at the table up there on the top left, ladies and gentlemen, the group is all on three points. Tight. And it's also worth noting, by the way, the fact that they find themselves in last place in the Europa League is a bit of an anomaly because before they lost to Feyenoord, they had never, ever lost a game in the Europa League. Never. Then they go beat 2-0 off Feyenoord pretty handily, ladies and gentlemen. And what I'm saying is, we bet Feyenoord. You know what I'm saying? But all joking on that aside, before we wrap up the portal preview, let's turn our attention to some of the players then, especially in European football. We do this every prediction video. I'm going to pick out two key players who I think is going to be influential for them and we will need to shut down or stop if we are to be successful. Now, the first one is actually going to be a left-back by the name of Alex Telles. And Alex is constantly talked up as being the next portal player to get that big money move elsewhere and where it's probably going to be is Real Madrid because apparently they've identified this man as the replacement to Marcelo at left back who was one of the best left backs of my generation. That is what we are playing tomorrow. And the reason I think he's going to be so key in this game of football is the fact that he is an attacking, attacking left back. He loves to bomb forward especially at home where it's almost like they take the leash off him and just let him go crazy. He's skillful. He's not just a guy that can run and cross it. He can get in the box and score goals himself but his main attribute is creating chances for other people and I just look at that right hand side and if we're playing our field in there that leaves them pretty much with two on one versus Tavo Knight. That kind of scares me. So I think going into this game of football, whoever we play at right mid not only plays the role of a right mid but gets back and helps Tavernier defend the two on the left because it's the main attacking outlet for Porto every single time. And the second player I'm going to be picking out from this Porto team who is littered with very good players like Pereira and even Marcelo, the other centre-back, but I'm going to pick out Pepe because I just see this being a battle of the ages. It's Pepe versus Morelos. This is going to be box office. Now, depending on your age, when I say the name Pepe, you're either going to think of the Arsenal player who costs £72 million who can't finish his dinner, or you're going to think of the mad Portuguese centre half who made Sergio Ramos look tame. And unfortunately for us, it is the mad centre half and there's so much going on at this battle. Yes, it's going to be interesting from a physical perspective, but I really want to see how Morelos handles this game of football because he's coming up against a guy who's the master of the dark arts, who's going to push every single button to try and make Morelos flip his switch and get 
in trouble. That's that's pretty much how the game's going to go. So look out for Morelos, look out for Pepe. That is going to decide the game, in my opinion. Come on, Alfredo, keep the heat and bang in a couple of screamers. That would be pretty damn nice. But I think with everything being said, that is the portal preview complete. Now we turn our attention to where it belongs, and that is on the Rangers. And this is where the smiles sort of fade for a very brief moment because coming into this game of football, it is a disappointing time given the result at the weekend. And not even just the result, you know what I mean? If we could have just battered them left, right and centre and never scored the goal and we dropped points, we could say, right, it was one of those days where the goalkeeper has a world day. It happens, we move on for it. But it was the disappointing performance that's really stuck with a lot of us. And again, the massive mistake from Tavernier. However, I don't think we should be going into this game of football with a negative mindset, especially when you look at the track record in European football under Gerard. It's very, very positive. However, going into this game of football, I don't think we should be going in with a negative mindset, especially when you look at our track record with Gerard in European football. It's very, very impressive, and the arguments could be made that Rangers should be sitting top right now when they go against this game versus Porto if it wasn't for another two costly mistakes for the captain. And that leads me perfectly to the first talking point in today's video and it obviously has to be Captain James Tavernier. Now after the result of the weekend there were so many people demanding that he has dropped for the next game but I just wanted to revisit that question that so many of you guys were asking and discussing down there in the comments. A couple of days later, now that cooler heads have prevailed, do you still want Tavernier dropped for this game in Porto. And in my personal opinion, I know I'm going to get a wee bit of flack for this. For me, we have to ride with the captain. That's right, I'm picking Tavernier. He has to start in this game of football. Yes, I know he's made a couple of costly errors and he's cost us in the Europa League to be sitting in the top of our group and obviously in domestic football as well. Completely agree. But he has got the ability to rebound and be a match winner for us. We've seen it so many times over his Rangers career. When it does click, he's pretty damn brilliant so if we are going to go to Porto and come with a result I think it's going to have to be with Tavernier in the setup and Tavernier playing balls out and that's just my opinion by the way I know there's going to be so many people saying it the opposite way and that's completely fine that's what this channel is for us discussing it's never just about my opinion so I'm looking forward to seeing what you're saying down there I did see one very very good argument that someone was making the other day about starting Flanagan in this game because he's more of an out and out defender and I completely agree if we were to put that I think that would nullify the right hand side a lot more especially with the threat of Teles but I just feel like going forward we need someone to drive us and Tavernier whether you like him or not is usually that man to do that but yeah there's so much room for debate so I'm very interested to see what you have to say about the captain Tavernier. Now moving away from that and turning our attention to some team news and on this team news ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we have a massive massive boost. Maybe the kick up the jacks eh, that we needed for the weekend and that's none other than the fact that Ryan Jack is back. Oh that's right ladies and gentlemen confirmed by Gerard himself that Jack is fully fit and healthy going into this game of football. Now he's a part of the press conference, now that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll start the game of football, but the way that Gerard was talking, I'm pretty damn sure that they won't risk not playing him, especially against the Porto midfield. And the good news just continues from there in terms of Ryan Jack, and that's the fact that he was given a brand new contract, adding another two years onto his contract, a little bumper up on the wages, and we've tied down one of our best players for a couple more seasons positivity lads. Now we do have a fresh injury to break down and that's the fact that Andy King will be missing tomorrow's game with a muscle problem. Now it's not meant to be anything too serious but it is obviously rule him out of the game along with Jordan Jones who is still missing but he's getting closer and closer to coming back to playing for Rangers. Everyone else from the words of the gaffer fully fit and ready to go. And that leads us perfectly to the last part of today's video and that is going to be the prediction. On e on e on ladies and gentlemen it's Porto away. What are you thinking? And why? Let me know your opinions down there in the comment section. While you guys are doing that, I'll give you mine very, very briefly. I'm expecting a tough game. I mean, Porto, some of the fans aren't quite happy with the manager. And I have seen and translated a lot of the tweets to find out they're not 100% happy with the way the team is playing. But at home, they are very, very good. But there is an opportunity and a chance there to grab that cheeky goal. Maybe from Morelos or maybe from a set piece. Because they, like us, like to give a stupid silly goal away every now and then so it could be very interesting that battle in itself but for me I am going to go with Porto 1 
Rangers won. That's right, a score draw in this one, which I don't think would be a necessarily a bad result, especially considering pedigree in the Europa League, their winning rate especially at home is truly fantastic but I feel like if we grab a goal we could set up and frustrate them try and get the crowd to turn because again they're not 100% happy with the manager right now my goal scorer is going to be from a set piece and it's going to be none other than big Connor Golton I'm going for it and now that me and the have had their say let's sit back relax and hand the reins over to the people on Twitter then. There's been 1,101 votes. Thank you so much for getting involved. Now, this is a very, very tight poll. You've got 21% of the people voting for a Porto win. You've got 33% of the people agrees with me with a draw. But the winner with 46% of the vote is a Rangers away win, which I hope and pray that you guys are right. So let's see what the fact they say anyway. Will Rice in. Hopefully, if Tav's playing, he doesn't have a Diddy display. But I'm going to go with 3-1 to the famous Morelos double. And Ryan Kent, now that would send shockwaves around world football if that one was to happen. Huck 2, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Racing 2 1 Rangers to fall with a late winner. Bob Steele Racing, I would take a draw, but I'm going to go for unrealistic optimism. I'm going to say 2 1 to Rangers. There's nothing unrealistic about that, Bob. Book it, son. It's coming. Steeler Racing, head says Porto, heart says Rangers. So somewhere in between, I'll go with a 2 2. That comes in from Steely. Curtis writes in, 3-0 Rangers, bad result in the league usually means a good result in Europe, slash vice versa. Michael McDonald writes in, boring 0-0 game with a McGregor man of the match. Drew Scott writes in, heart says Jairs 2-1 but head saying a tough 1-1 draw. Drew, me and you, we're up here son, we're in sync. That's exactly how I feel. 2-1 in the heart, 1-1 in the heat. And the last two or three that we'll read out, the first one comes in from Jordan Bissett. He writes in, 2-1 Rangers, Morelos. And Kent to score. Adam Porter writes in, going to go with a tight game, but I think we'll come away with the win. 2-0 to Rangers with a Morelos dirty double. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video comes from Liam McNaughton, and he writes in, voted draw for the first time, and feel like it's very negative, even though it'd be a massive result before getting them at Ibrox. I'm the same Liam there. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Is Porto away? Let me know your thoughts. And opinions on that. If you don't mind smashing the like button if you're still watching to this very point in today's video, that means you're a channel legend, so any support would be absolutely tremendous. Before we wrap up today's video, special mention to the absolute legends on the Patreon's account for all their support. I cannot thank you guys enough. And as always, I've been Cedron Over 92. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.